In this series of video clips, we're going to look at the human factors surrounding project management. And as we'll see, sometimes this is called the OBS, or Organisation Breakdown Structure. Really, the purpose of this lecture is to ensure a very good chance of project success by being well organised as a project manager and by understanding how our project is going to affect the rest of the organisation and how that organisation can assist us in delivering our project. One of the big areas we'll be looking at within this uh, lecture is leadership and team working. And we need to take those people that have been assigned to work on our project and we need to make them a team. These are the different topics that we'll be covering as we go through this lecture. Uh, first of all, we'll look at some company organisation structures. Uh, companies organise themselves in different ways and this can affect our project. We'll be looking at skills, skills for the project manager and how we can monitor the skills of our team members. We'll be looking at leadership as a skill in that section as well. We'll look at some methods for communication. Uh, frequently I've said that communication is important to projects and here we'll be giving you some tools to use to improve the chance of your project's success by improving the communication. We'll have a look at uh, where the project team resides and we'll be looking at the project team. So all of this is sometimes called the OBS or the Organisation Breakdown Structure. Uh, we've already met the work breakdown structure and a cost breakdown structure, which I often call the cost account. So this is the OBS. And uh, where, are, where are we in our project life cycle? Uh, we're still planning the project, but instead of creating project plans, we're planning the environment around our project, the context that the project lives in. We're thinking about the people, we're thinking about leadership, we're thinking about communication. So the first uh, subject that we'll look at is company organisation structures. But before we get there, we need to consider that the project manager has their own day-to-day -day trials and tribulations. Um, they want the project to be successful because that's how they're measured. They've got to get home to their wife and child. Maybe they need to leave early for a dentist appointment. And now the project manager, in order to get the project done, is given a project team. And these people all have their own issues. They want to manage their own careers. They want to move on, uh, maybe do a training course. They need to leave at three o'clock today, please, because I've got to pick up my kids from school because my wife's not well. But over the top of this, we've got the organization. The organization is running maybe five dozens of projects, depending on how big the organization is. And the poor project manager is lost amongst all of these issues as the organisation changes priority on project. Organisations can help projects run smoothly. Uh, organisations that have that five-year strategic plan, it shows what needs to be done to achieve the company's strategy. It suggests the projects and it allows the project manager to link their project to the company's strategy, saying this is an important project. Organisations can help if they're learning organisations. In lecture 11, we looked at project reviews and we looked at how we can learn for future projects. And companies that support this process to encourage project reviews becomes a learning organisation. Companies that are financially stable uh, will help projects run smoothly. Uh, we've looked at how uh, projects that demand a payback within 12 months maybe because of the financial situation that the company's in, they have a cash flow issue. Sometimes they're not the best projects for the organisation to run. But running a project in an environment where you've been asked to cut costs by 10%, or where other projects are being cancelled because of a lack of cash, it can cause a problem. So companies that are financially stable, companies that are financially stable and can provide money as contingency in the budget are going to help projects. Senior management support. Companies can help projects by giving senior management support. And not lip service by saying, I'm the senior manager and I will support you. Uh, but by actually practicing what they preach, by really supporting the projects, by finding out what's going wrong. By giving power to the teams who are delivering the projects such that they can buy things 
rather than have to fill in paperwork and get things signed off, that teams, that the project teams can make decisions by themselves. So the devolvement of decision making from the senior managers to the project teams, uh, to an acceptable level of course, but companies that set that up can help projects run smoothly. Companies that provide training for their staff. Often in financial crises, the first thing that gets cut is a training budget. We need to develop the skills of our people such that they perform better. Companies that have good training plans, training budgets, training records will help projects run smoothly. And companies that are good to work with, with their customers and suppliers. Companies that see their suppliers as partners in what they do, that see their contractors as partners in what they do, that they want an ongoing relationship with this partner, this supplier, this contractor, and therefore it's never let's get the last penny we can out of this contractor because we want the maximum profit and we don't care about them. In those situations, it's very difficult to work with those contractors and suppliers a second time. Now, the project uh, might be urgent, and we have to uh, recognize that sometimes projects are cost or time or quality critical. But if we're working on a time critical project, this is going to shorten our thinking and planning time. So we've not got as much time to think. We can't involve the rest of the organization. We can't allow time for that communication to seep through. We can't wait a week for a meeting um, with uh, the service department or the maintenance department to tell them, to bring them in about how this project might affect them. If we are time critical, we haven't got time to train our staff. It might be desirable to train the staff, but we simply haven't got the time to get those training courses booked and arranged before we have to start work on the project. We're not going to have time to proactively look at project risk. So the project is not going to be effective. However, if we do have a lot of time to plan in the project, then we do have time to think and plan. We've got time to choose the project team, to develop the project team, to train the project team in those skills that they need, to start making a group into a team. We've got time to communicate with the rest of the organization, to listen to their concerns. We've got time to identify the stakeholders and communicate with them properly. We've got time to be proactive in our risk management. And this all sounds like a wonderful situation, but we may be too late. In Western world, in the capitalist society, getting products to market as quickly as possible, delivering your project quickly means you get the benefits quicker. So it might be nice to have a lot of time, but often it's not the case.